Like It Podcast. <laughs> We're also live on Instagram as well, so if people want to follow us, The Leg It Podcast, just search The Leg It Podcast as well, and you'll find us a uh, YouTube. Obviously, it's crazy time at the moment, so we're going to try and push out as many podcasts as we can fit in. You're doing fuck all. <laughs> Sadly, yes. <laughs> fuck all. So, um, I text you before and I thought, a lot. Of, we've had a few messages um, because people think the podcast is going to stop which it isn't, but obviously you don't know what might happen over the next, well, you don't know what might happen over the next 24 hours, let alone the next week. So um, we've had a lot of people messaging, saying, talking about positivity and how much this has helped them in the past with mental health problems. And obviously we're coming into a sort of really strange era at the moment where, I mean, no one can give advice of what to do if you're struggling with mental health, if you can't even... First of all, go out your house, let alone go to the gym, go to the shops, uh, even meet people in person, let alone via Skype or anything like that or FaceTime. So we obviously thought we'd have a conversation about positivity. So um, obviously, I know you've struggled various different points with maybe motivation and positivity. I will say on this whole weird thing at the moment is... I actually feel more positive than I think I've ever done. And I don't know why. Yeah, I wouldn't say I feel more positive, but I feel, um, I think, in fact, I'm lying. I think it comes in waves. Sometimes mm. I, I feel, fucking hell, like, what is going on? <laughs> but then, yeah, I do feel surprisingly upbeat about this. Yeah, I feel, honestly, I don't think I've ever felt this. It sounds so weird, me saying this, but I'm just, like, I'm just saying the truth here. I've never... Like, I don't know, obviously I'm I'm not in a great position because obviously work is struggling. So I'm not in this unbelievable position where I just get, you know, I've got a bank full of money and I can just suddenly do what I want. I don't. But I don't know, there's something about this. I think this point now is a real opportunity for people to, because... Re-engage with yeah. loads of things. Re-engage with, and I know you're playing Roller Coaster Tycoon out there. Yeah, that's going to stop. I need to not. But like, this is that. such an opportunity. I, I was, I've finished uh, a book in the past 24 hours. I've been re- different articles. I've been trying yeah. to keep my mind busy. That's what I think people need to be doing. Yeah, and as funny <laughs> as it is saying, I'm going to download Football Manager and Roller Coaster Tycoon. It'd be great if everyone did do more positive things like read more books and you know yeah yeah. I don't know, learn a language or something that you know yeah, do, yeah, yeah, do something. Yeah, yeah but I know what you mean I, I feel a bit weirdly positive and upbeat I almost feel a little bit like people are going to experience not what it's not what I kind of went through getting blown up but almost this kind of you think about it, let's just say we're on lockdown for say three months for like no one knows what's going to happen but let's just say it's three months when I got blown up in Afghanistan 11 years ago, I was in a kind of, lock, it wasn't lockdown, but I mean this kind of period of what the fuck do you do? And again, no one's got the answers because no one knows, no one knew then how my injury was going to fare. They didn't know whether I had a career in the Marines or not. They didn't know if I was going to have flashbacks from PTSD. They didn't know if I could go out the house. They didn't know if, if I get an infection, my let. All these uncertainties which lead to this period of what we're in now. Mm-hmm. What the fuck is going on? Yeah. And if I look back now at the similarities between then and now, they're, act- they're fucking quite a lot. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And you can't I, do anything. And I think where I feel weirdly upbeat is that 11 years on, well, not even 11 years, like years on from that, I found it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Mm. And I, I want people to kind of and maybe this is where your positivity is coming from I'd love it if this was as awful as it is and people will die and loved ones will die and have died already maybe and the financial kinds of implications and things that are going to hit hard and they will hit hard for everyone I don't know I've got this weird suspicion that it'll it'll be the making of a lot of people yeah 100% mate I think this is like a good factory reset for yeah. a lot of people where they'll just mate, I was talking to my missus before and I was like literally went on a walk this morning because that's all i think the majority of mm. everyone has just got fuck all else to do except walk everywhere i might start i might write a write a write a walking book but <laughs> um is that i said look this is like this is such an amazing time that 
the not an amazing time. I, I, I don't want to mix my words up, but such an amazing time that everyone who is together and it and maybe is not suffering from you know m- money problems or anything, just to, to start to think about how mm-hmm. um, grand you know that how normal things are taken for such yeah. granted. You know, so going to the shops or anything like that. It's like, it's a proper reset. And I, I said, I, I guarantee you this time period will be looked back upon mm-hmm. where people suddenly, you know, do appreciate lorry drivers for yeah. the, what they do versus hedge fund managers that do appreciate nurses, that do appreciate supermarket workers, that do, you know, get that, like... You know, next time you're waiting in an A&E and it's three hours and you're moaning, you know, think about what they... I've been through yeah, yeah. after this. Should, mate, I remember going from being a Royal Marine Commando in Afghanistan. 2009 was the busiest, deadliest time for a British soldier. It was fucking mental out there. I've gone from this job where, like, so much value, so much purpose, I got blown up. And then a few months later, I remember lying in my hospital bed and all the lads from Liverpool drove down to Birmingham to come visit me. And I've gone from being being this kind of super kind of um, like really determined, you know, I want to be a Marine, I'm this and that. And I'm lying in hospital bed months later and my mate said, you know, what's the one thing you want to do now? Come on, let's be positive. You know, what's the one thing you want to do now? And I remember lying there and I went, you know what? If I could just walk the shop on a Saturday morning and buy the paper and walk home, I'd be the happiest man in the world. Mm. And that's how much it brought it back down to basics. I was just like, I've went from being this on the front line, fucking, you know, the Taliban 200 metres away, me here fighting for my life with all my mates with this real kind of role and, you know, purpose to then saying a few months later, if I can walk around the shop without you having to use crutches, without having to stop because I'm in pain, get the Sunday paper and sit there and look at the footy results. I'll be happy. Mm. It's like, you know, that if I, God, if you can just grant me this one yeah. wish, I won't ask for it and never yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I feel everyone's going to be in now. Mm. You know, when you, when you can text your, text your mate or your auntie or your cousin or your, say, do you fancy a coffee? Okay, I'll meet you in Costa in 10 minutes. Yeah. Like, how nice will that feel? Yeah. Oh, mate, the scenes, the do you know scenes what I mean? when, and uh, I don't even, don't get me wrong, there will be <clears> lots of partying going on, but I just mean even a, a coffee. Mm. Like, do you want to fancy a coffee? My friend's pregnant. She's about to give birth. My friend Amy. I can't even go and visit her. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like going to just see a newborn baby, going to see your friend and congratulate them on a new job or a new this and new that. Mm. We can't do any of that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what makes me come back to what you started with, giving me this kind of spells of being upbeat, is we've got all of that to come. Mm. Like, you know, you get through this shitty period and it is shit. But fuck me and the joy. Remember the, the other day on the podcast and I said like I was the happiest guy in the world just walking my dog in the sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. It's like I feel that. Not everyone's going to experience what it's like to get blown up. But I feel a lot of people will feel what I feel now in my life where it's like, because I'm just so chilled out and I'm like, fucking hell, like, it's fine. I think a lot of, I'm hoping a lot more people <clears> will have that same kind of attitude. Yeah. Because you've been through so much shit which everyone will have been through. Mm, definitely. And that, you know, being able to, you know, in three, four months time and, you know, this, this time right now really is, I think obviously it's easier for us to talk about it. Um, you know, cause I think both of us in a, you know, we don't really have that many people who, you know, uh, could be affected, I suppose. I mean, I've got my grandma and things obviously there's people down the line and think, yeah. you know, not being selfish, but you know, this is a, a real point now that, you know, people can do, can be defined as like, um, not leaders as such, but um, I'm trying to think of the word. I can't think of the word. Like a pioneer almost. For yeah, like, like for, a be- for a better way of living. Like and yeah, and and, and being a, a, not an authority figure, but someone that you know. This is a real like testing pot now for yeah. you know for people to you know rather than sulk around and feel sorry for yourself is you know it is to you know do something about it if you can and you know that's that sort of like that real testing part of being put under you know they say that you know diamonds are made under pressure aren't they you know mm. so that time now i think is it's a little bit like me going through royal marine training like honestly it's <clears throat> again i think maybe why i'm getting these bursts of positivity is because i just feel <clears throat> so much of like 
I've kind of experienced these things before, whether it was being blown up or joining the Marines. For example, you know, you join the Marines and you're there with 60 or 59 other guys there that you don't know. You're all thrust into this kind of awful environment where you're getting, you're doing things you don't want to do and with people you might not know and stuff mm. and all that. And which is a little bit like this in the sense that you're doing things that you don't want to do. You're having to do them on your own and you're having to like, it's just all a bit fucking hell. It's all different, isn't it? Yeah, you're out yeah. of your comfort zone, which is what we're in now. And then what the Marines do is they put this pressure on you to the point where you think, you know, what you can quit if you want. I think people think of the Marines like it's all shouting and screaming a lot of the time. It's it's not really like, you know, there are times they do shout and scream, but it's like, if you don't want to be here, fucking don't be yeah, here yeah. then. I remember Paul Weiss, sorry, to, Paul Weiss said, because I said to him when we recorded that podcast is, so I rock up at, um, Lim, is it Limston? Limston, yeah. Limston, yeah. They're not looking for an ultra marathon runner who can run, no. you know, 42 miles in, I don't know, however many hours. They're looking, you know, I, I might not be very fit, but I don't fucking give up. Yeah. Do, do you want, obviously, there's a level of fitness that's needed. And, you, there, and but. you're showing signs of, you know, cheerfulness in the face of adversity, which is is kind of what you need now, like you're saying about being a kind of leader and stuff. Mm. It's like, so when you're in training, you'll go on an exercise and it's fucking freezing cold. You know, you're tired, you're cold, wet and hungry and all that kind of stuff. Every miserable emotion you can think of. And they'll have you all with your weapons above your head, which is quite heavy. They'll, you know, run you up and down a hill. And then at the bottom of the hill, there'll be a big muddy puddle. And they'll have 60 guys sitting in the bottom of this muddy puddle. You fucking piss wet through. <clears throat> it's three in the morning. It's pitch black. You know, they've the training team have got the head torches. They're looking at you. And it's that moment where you're thinking, I don't fucking want to be here. Mm. This, is, this is shit. Mm. And yeah, you can get up and you can quit and you say, I'm, I'm not, I'm, this isn't for me. Obviously, no one in this environment now can say, I quit. But what you, <laughs> I'm what, out. Yeah, I'm thrown and I'm done. <laughs> so what I mean by that, though, is you can be the one who sits there and with your <clears> rifle <throat> above your head and kind of just fucking moans and, you know, and just even, not even moans, but just as that sad face of just, I yeah. don't want to be here, this is shit. Or the kind of commando values, what they talk about in the Marines, is being cheerful, cheerful in the face of adversity. So you're there, you know, you don't want to be there with your rifle above your head sitting in a muddy puddle, mm. but you're going, you know, you're making jokes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You're going, lads, only fucking two hours till you get to eat our corned beef uh, hash out of our ration boxes, eh? Fucking yeah, yeah. hell, boys. You know, <laughs> like, no one wants to eat corned beef hash out of a ration box at six in the morning on Woodbury Common, but you're there with your rifle, and when you hear someone say that, you go, fucking hell, like, yeah. you know what I mean? And, yeah, it, yeah. and that's what, that's what <clears throat> people, are, you know, there's so much potential to be that person. You know, social media is good. Like, you, you see things, and I've seen a teabag challenge before, a guy sitting there, and he's just launching teabags in his, in his cup. You know, stupid things like that, where everyone's in this shit situation. You can be the one who moans and... Feel sorry for yourself. Feel sorry for themselves, and just puts out bad vibes and bad energy. Or you can be the one who goes, you know what? Hey, fucking let's all, you know, lie in a fucking you know, you're 10 cups up and, you know... Or, or, or try and do, try and run a, a K at one kilometre that you've never done before. Do, or, yeah, 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 do something like, you know, you just, all things <clears> that <throat> are, are, are unexpected and kind of, you know, are just a fun to do. Yeah. And that's kind of the same qualities the Marines, the Marines kind of look for. It's such a good social, so you've just reminded me then, it's such a good social experiment this because, like you, you might have seen on my Instagram stories that like people are really starting to wind me up because like, you know that f what what I mean by that is there's a section of society now, and there's people in my family who I can see who have just like their head <clears throat> their head is just melted. So if you imagine the um, on nine eleven there was that flight, wasn't there? That um, the passengers, some of the passengers took over. There was a group of I can't remember how many who decided to take <clears throat> initiative and authority and thought I ain't gonna just sit here and yeah. die. I'm going to fucking fight this. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a certain set. And that's what I feel some people are, mm. especially in my family. Fucking hell. But like, they're just sitting there, just, just waiting. Just, yeah. If they're not in, in you know, in, in retrospect, in, in this scenario, they're just sat there watching, mm -hmm. watching BBC News 24, you know, thinking that the world, the ceiling's going to collapse in them. And any, anyone who looks at them through the door has, has got fucking Corona. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, or, yeah. You know, do something 
positive during this time where three months that you know you can't yeah. do um anything so i think it's uh it'd be interesting like three four months down the line see who look that i don't mean that in a bad way see who's fucking crumbled but yeah you know you can see well you, on that note though i think it's going to be really and again not to be negative about this and hopefully there'll be more positives than the will negatives but i think relationships are going to get tested so much in the sense of like the negative side of it is oh so many divorces yeah no <laughs> but no, without that though i mean like you could sit here and you could go you know you know you're in isolation and that you can't really see, well you, you can't see anyone so you're sitting there and you, you might go in three months time you might go to the pub and you might see a mate but you won't have spoke to him in three months and you might think you might look at your mate and go you didn't ring me or text me once in that mm. three months so it could the negativity of well thinking about it in three months you didn't once ring or text me yeah, yeah. do you know what i mean yeah. the positive side of it could be right now you think you know what i've not spoke to so and so in a while i'll give them a quick call yeah, yeah. hopefully more of that happens than people holding grudges thinking can i didn't anything you once <laughs> but you can see that happen, can't you? yeah 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 um i've certainly i've certainly talked to a lot more people who it's nice wouldn't... and I, i'd encourage that you know just look through your phone book when you are sitting there bored you know instead of watching another fucking YouTube clip. Yeah, all of a sudden, you know, shite and <laughs> or or just looking at corona stuff, <clears throat> which is fucking just depressing as fuck. Just look through your phone book, you know, do like a letter a day. A Monday do A fucking how's Angela doing? Not fucking yeah, seen yeah. her in years. Yeah, yeah. B how Barbara, how are you? Fucking, you know, just, yeah, yeah. Just make little tasks like that. Yeah. And, I, and I think it Do you know what really helped me this morning? Obviously I went on a walk this morning pretty early. Um it's easy to get up with my brain start like kicks in at 6am now and I just I think it's the weather I think it's how light it is outside but I actually got in my car and drove like drove about 25 minutes for nothing mm. just because I needed to get out of the house I needed to put some music on and I just needed to as if I was going as if it was just a normal day driving to work and that really yeah. there's something that there that just really help me i don't know what you know it's weird yeah, yeah. going for a drive but and like, that's the thing with that people i think again going from my experience of when i got blown up and going through certain parts of my rehab when i i've had infections and i was back in hospital again and stuff and and you know what there was a part of me when about six months after i had my leg amputated uh, i had an infection in my leg i was going through this phase where i'd had the amputation and i thought right that's it now i can get out of my life and I just pushed it too hard and I ended up being back in hospital. And I, I was in hospital for about two and a half months with this really nasty infection. I was on antibiotics through a drip, but I had this disease. Two and a half months as in like you couldn't leave, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But in isolation, because I had this um, d this disease called Acinetobacter. Um, so I was in a room on my own. What's Acinetobacter? Acinetobacter is a fertilizer that they use in the, um, in the, in the mud in Afghanistan, the farmers use. And when it gets infected into you, don't worry, you can't catch it. But actually, all it does, it's a really minor infection. But it um, it basically is just constantly attacking your, your white blood cells. Really, yeah. Now, my body can easily fight it off. Um, it just makes me a bit tired because I'm just constantly fighting this little, tiny, little... And it's still and now? Still I think now. so, yeah. I think so. So okay. it's like tiny, tiny little thing that my body can constantly <clears> overpower. <throat> But it just takes that little bit more energy to do it. So for that reason, you have to be in isolation. So for about two and a half months, I'm in a room. Don't get me wrong, the nurses are coming in all the time and stuff. See how you are. So you're seeing new people and stuff. Um, I've got family and friends. But, but I was fucking in isolation. Do you know what oh, I mean? mate. Two and a half months in isolation. Yeah. And Could you not see and you couldn't see anyone? Just in a room on my own. And I couldn't get out of bed. My leg was fucked. What did you do? Just read magazines, watch telly, Did you? eat the shit hospital food. <laughs> a really funny story, a rude story, but it's a funny one. I um, I was obviously just fucking bored and uh, decided to knock one out. And the nurse come round like <laughs> fucking out five minutes later. Thankfully, I just finished. <laughs> and she takes me blood pressure. And it's obviously really high. And she's like, oh God, are you feeling okay? And I was like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm fine, yeah. Like all red and flustered in the face. <laughs> Are you sure? Oh God, I'll uh, have to come back in a minute, just check again, you know. And um, <gasps> but but so yeah, it is hard and it and it is shit. But I just hope that people don't go into this again. Just Mate, feeling fair, sorry for themselves, fit, mode. And yeah, I know what you mean. You've been through some proper shit, haven't you? That's what I'm saying. Do you forget? I mean, you know, like that. Too. Mate, I've never been in hospital. 
I reckon you know it, I mean? if you added all never. my days and weeks up, I reckon I've probably done about seven, seven months maybe. But if you've done it back to back all, I mean, some lads have done longer, a lot longer. I reckon on average probably, and that's not counting rehab, that's just hospital stays. I reckon it's probably close uh, to about six, seven months. Afghan proper fucked it for you, didn't it? But did it though? Well, yeah. Look and look at me now. I know. I like, <laughs> I would argue anyone. Well, do you know what I mean? Like, you'd forget that some little fertilizer that some farmer uses in Afghan. Mm. Like, why the fuck are you using that fertilizer? You know what I mean? Fuck knows. But that's the big point, and I'm so glad you say that. Fuck me. But did it? No, because I would argue with anyone. I've got the best life ever now. I don't. I haven't got a fucking fast car. I haven't got a mansion. I haven't got this. That what people may, might think creates happiness. I live in my little three bed semi detached house. I've got my dog. I've got my daughter. I got a job that I love. I go around hopefully trying to inspire people. I do a podcast, which even if one person listens to, I'd be happy. I've got a good group of mates and I'm family. What more do you want? Like, what more do you need? Mm. Do you know what I mean? And Afghan and all the shite that you've just said and and more that we haven't said helped shape the way I look at things now and that's why again going through all this shit I've got a friend there who's um, his mum and dad basically have said to him like you, you're gonna have to move out for a couple of months Cause because of, cause of this do you know what I mean so you might not see your mum or dad for fucking weeks and months on end it's shit it's fucking really shit like I see my dad every day mm. I don't know whether to cut army contact with him or what. I don't know what to do. And it's fucking weird, horrible, shitty times. But again, to be positive, because we said we're going to be positive. Yeah. Like now, <laughs> I value my my relationship with my dad so much. Like I value things so much more because of all the shit I've been through. Mm -hmm. Like, and I think that's what people have got to look forward to. You know, you will appreciate, like you said before, going for a coffee. Even football. Like, Oh, mate, imagine. Like... God, I, I feel embarrassed now how how much I took for granted Jürgen Klopp and that football team. I turned with Anfield every week for the past two and a half years and we did not get beat. In the Premier League at Anfield, didn't yeah, get yeah. beat. Still haven't been beat for a, yeah, yeah. however long. Yeah. Got beat for the first time the other day against Atletico Madrid. For that, the first time. What been, was that like in the ground? Weird, like... I didn't go for a pint after the game. Did normally we go for a pint in the cop bar. It was shut because it went to extra time. It was too late and all that. J just that on its own. Mate, just right. Just think, right. <laughs> Since Jürgen Klopp had come to that club, right, and started going, I've had my season tick for uh, two, three seasons now. I have turned up, right, every other week with all my mates, watched what, what turned out to be European champions, world champions, yeah, and, and yeah. England, English champions, let's say. Every week I'm being entertained. I'm seeing some of the best footballers on the planet. And we're all my mates. I'm going for a beer with them all after every game, because we won every game. Yeah, yeah. And I'm there thinking, this is fucking how every Saturday should be. And then... And then now it's like... Boom. How... Like, just how much did I take that for granted? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, and it's like, <laughs> fucking hell, this is like a massive wake-up call for you to just appreciate things. Oh, yeah, massive. Whether it's something as big as watching Liverpool and Jürgen Klopp and this football team, or walking your dog. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? 100%. And, and that is like, what a great thought that is, mm. to think that you're going to experience that again. It might not be for three months, might not be for six months, might not be for a year, who knows. But one day you'll be standing there in a pub in a couple of years' time or in a beer garden or on a nice walk with your missus or your kids or you might just be at the football ground. You could be doing anything. And you go, this and you is go, fucking oh, brilliant. God, I remember when we couldn't do this. Do you know what I mean? How good's this feel now? Yeah. And, and that's why I say, mate, I'm just dead positive now because, like, I've had all that. I've had my fucking months of isolation, mate. I've been, even before I got injured, I've been in Afghan in a fucking mud hut. With a piece of paper of a fixture list, and that was my closest thing to the Pearl Football Club. Looking at the calendar, didn't have, didn't even have a phone. <laughs> so you're just trying to keep in, you know, you're knocking off days on the calendar. What date is it today? It's the fifteenth today, or we've got if it's the fifteenth, it's what Tuesday. Could you or, watch it over there or not? No, no, no. Did not have TVs, no. No, mate, I was in fucking the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, but I've seen what I've seen one place. They had a KFC and all sorts. Yeah, fucking I'm on the front line, fucking <laughs> slotting fucking people. And, no. But in that other place? What? In Camp Bastion. Camp, Camp Bastion. Could you, could you yeah, watch yeah. it there? Yeah. Um, 
I don't know, I wasn't I was only there for a couple of days and then I got shipped off to like the front line bits. So most of the like front line soldiers won't have tellies, nothing like that. Did you understand? In fact we did have a telly, I think actually I'm lying, yeah. But we used to have watched that um that wipeout. BFBS was it? British Forces Broadcasting Services, yeah. We did have a TV, but... How did they get that, then? You yeah. weren't watching fucking Sky Sports, put it that way. <laughs> they didn't have the subscription. No, Al Jazeera hadn't fucking... Or whatever you call it. <laughs> it is Al Jazeera, yeah. Is it? Yeah. No, we didn't watch no footy out there. So again, mate, I think that's why I'm... And I apologi- ap- apologise to anyone. Because I think people are getting to that point now, aren't they? If you're not as sensitive about it all, people oh, think, yeah, oh, yeah, you're yeah. being wrong, or you shouldn't do this, shouldn't do that. And So if people are listening to the podcast or follow me and I've said something and it looks like I'm not taking it as serious I am the thing is though for me I've just experienced a lot of the self-isolation a lot yeah, of yeah. down times a lot of not knowing how I'm going to get fucking paid again And yeah and also having... taking it seriously doesn't mean you can't be positive and you can't of like course, do, do yeah. you know what I mean so yeah um, we so... were just saying before weren't we like how you know ever since I think ever since we're recording this on Monday the 20. 20- 4th of March I think it is today we were saying before how anything you put online you have to be like a little bit careful yeah. that you're not like I mean people might have a go at us now what should we yes. say to them well, how far you we- <laughs> oh, yes <laughs> groaning and suck my dick <laughs> <laughs> yeah but we're um, we're a bit away though aren't we yeah yeah. we haven't handshaked or anything you know no. I think I made well. my own coffee yeah um, <laughs> yeah no people might have a go at us for doing this but you know what, though, mate, as well. I, I I'd said, say that we're essential workers, though, providing a service. Providing, yeah, for people's mental health. Yeah. Now, I said this before, right? I, I genuinely now, right, I'm seeing my dad, my daughter, mm-hmm. my daughter's mum, you. Yeah. Who else? Yeah. To be honest, I've only seen my missus, my mum, my stepdad, and then I was two metres away from my grandma. I see oh, my two Instagram, sisters. Yeah. So I'm seeing four or five, say four or five people. But to be fair, the only people I'm worried about is obviously I'm wor- obviously worried about my grandma, but I'm not going nearer. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. If I if you're only seeing three, four, five people, I'm seeing three, four, five people. That's you. you I, I'm hoping maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I'm thinking you're doing enough. Yeah, yeah. The, the other side I'm thinking is. <clears throat> You'd go fucking crazy. Yeah. You like there's only so much FaceTime and WhatsApp messaging you can do. You need social interaction. I'm sorry, but mate, I was thinking that when I was speaking to my grandma because I was like, yeah, but you've been through this before. Obviously, in the Second World War, she was quite young. I don't know how old she was, but like, so I'm not trying to say that this is uh, not as uh, crazy. I suppose the Second World the Second World War was pretty fucking crazy, but um. You know, you imagine being every single night hearing a siren thinking something mm. fucking above could... <clears throat> I mean, you've experienced haven't you? But, you know, and being a little kid and mm. then having to go into an Anderson shelter in your back garden and like... Yeah. But that's, that's again, another... And that. rationing. Look, now we've got the ability, we can just go to the supermarket and, all right, you might not be able to find bread, but... You can find pretty much anything, yeah. beer, alcohol. Imagine having to take that little ration book, like stamp thing, mm. and you can only have half a piece of chocolate. Do you know what I mean? And that's what the other, again, positive thing is, right? The human body and the human mind is very adaptable. And as hard as this all seems right now, you'll get used to it and it'll be become okay. I'm not mm. saying it'll become great and you'll love it, but you'll manage and it will be manageable. It'll be fine. Again, going back to Afghan, getting shot at, not a pleasant experience or this one time in Afghan we had it um, so that was definitely an Uncle Albert line wasn't it this one time in Afghan um, <laughs> there was um, I think they were Iranian I think they were they wasn't from Afghan anyway mate it was so funny like it's like a fucking movie <clears throat> they had a uh, every like 6 o'clock bang on the dot 6 o'clock uh, we got mortared in the, 6 o'clock in the morning in the night in the night yeah, and then we got, then this happened two or three nights on the run. Like a sort of dinner, a dinner. Oh, mate, like, but uh, it was on the dot, on the <laughs> fucking dot. I don't know how they used to do it. Anyway, and then we got some intel that it was a, a like a group of um, Iranian um, mortar, fire, mortar fire controllers, whatever, and, and they were like really good because they were fucking hitting the camp 
Mount or in and around the camp. So they'd done it before. They'd done it before. Yeah. So they'd been like drafted in fucking <laughs> from, from Iran. Yeah. It's on army. It, <clears throat> it's crazy. Yeah. So anyway, this happened for about a week. Six o'clock on the dot, and we're trying to find where the fire. And from. you couldn't see where it couldn't, was coming from. You just, you just imagine looking out, right? Go to, go into Everton Valley in Liverpool and just looking out over the city. Could you not see where it was put? Like, yeah, but where where'd you look though? It's like if I took you up to my bedroom, I live on a hill, and I looked out, and I went, when something goes bang in a minute, see where, see if you can see where it came from. But how many of you was looking out? Fucking hundreds. <laughs> well, yeah, it's six o'clock, right? It's where every after, the, after like a it, few nights it happened. Yeah, we all were looking out, like at ten yeah. to six, right? Yeah. Come on, lads, or the... half five. We'd like get up there, get ready, start looking for people who potentially could be setting up. I mean, anyway, so my point is, after about a week, we got them. I think, I think some of the snipers took them out. The point is, though. First time that happens, you're like, fucking hell, this is fucking hell, I'm gonna, gonna die, this is fucking... By the fifth and sixth night, it got to, like, say, two minutes past six, they're like, fucking hurry up, lads, fucking, you know. <clears throat> and you, you become used to it. Yeah, and yeah. you're like, so this thing that is so scary and it's so negative and it's so, oh my God, what if the mortar, what if it lands right on me? They're getting good, they got closer yesterday, oh God, what mm. are they gonna do tonight? And, you know, by the end of it, you're like... Come on, you fucking cunts. Come on, let's have it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And that's a little bit like this corona. At first, everyone's like, oh my God, oh my God. As the weeks and months go on of this lockdown and this isolation, you'll get used to it. Mm. And it'll be like, you know what? We'll get them one day. We'll yeah, get yeah. it one day. It'll all be over. And we can go back to just normal life. Mm. Is there any times, you know, in when <laughs> in normal life... What about the times where, like, everyone obviously feels like they can't be asked sometimes in the morning, but <clears throat> what um, did you do? Was it the gym? Was it the, was it taking your dog for a walk or, like, would you get in a bit of a rut throughout the day or, like, is there any yeah, point? Um, but yeah, like, all of those things yeah. for, like, normal thi- like normal reasons for getting fed up and stuff like that. But, yeah, walking the dog. So I think hopefully up to now everyone can still get out. So whether you walk, whether you have a dog or not, go for a fucking walk. (laughs) That's it. Go for a walk. That'd be number one. If you can go for a run as well in the the evenings, maybe Mm. go for a run. Exercise in your house. Everyone can fucking exercise in the house. Do star jumps in your living room. Do press ups, do sit ups. Get fucking baked baked beans in your house and use them as fucking weights. You know, you lift them enough times, you get a sweat on. Yeah, yeah. Get, Get exercising. Um, mate, you know what I used to do, and I was speaking to my um, to my friend Hannah about this. There's a video on YouTube right called uh, "How Bad Do You Want It." Oh, the Eric Thomas one. Yeah, with the guy yeah, yeah. in the American football. Have you American, seen yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, seen it. Yeah, you. Sh- it was you who showed me it. It's had about forty-eight million yeah. views. <laughs> about eight of them are me. <laughs> right, but anyway, the line in it, I give the story away, but go and watch it. It's it's called "How Bad Do You Want It," and um basically goes this young guy who goes to a guru and he says you know i want to be successful so the guru says meet me at the beach at 6 a.m yeah yeah. so meet him at the beach he goes into the water and this good video this guru gets the guy's head and he's like you know how how bad you want to be successful he's saying really bad yeah i really want to be successful so the guy gets his head and thrusts him in in underwater the guy's like flapping he's like oh my god get off me you know all like trying to just as the ba- the guy's about to pass out, the guru lifts his head up and he says, when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And he goes on to say, you know, when all you want to do is be successful, you know, you'll forget to eat, you'll forget to fucking sleep, you'll be working way past your bedtime, you'll forget, oh, fucking, I haven't even had lunch, God, because you're just so focused on, on being successful and working towards your goal. For about six or nine months right when i was started off doing the motivational speaking and I'm, I'm just trying to develop a website i'm trying to think of what would make a good picture like a good yeah, cheesy yeah. quote i'm thinking of where i could potentially get experience of speaking from i'm trying to make Find business clients, clients or, yeah, yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah every day when i had a shower the video was on for about five and a half six minutes i would hop to the shower put youtube on put that on and i'd have a shower mm-hmm. right i couldn't couldn't hear every word because i was in the shower but i knew it was on in the background and I'm having a shower, then as I'm getting dry, it's still on. Only in the shower for a couple of minutes, a few minutes getting dry. I had a video on every single morning for about six and nine months. It was my when, when you were initially doing that, yeah, yeah. yeah it was yeah. my morning ritual, right? And I did, thankfully, now 
you know, five, six years of, of doing the motivational speaking, I'd say I've made a success of it. I've spoken all around the world. Now, though, if I set a goal and I don't do it, I look at that in a positive and I go, well, did you deserve it, though? Mm. You know, did you put uh, did <clears throat> you put everything into it? Mate, there's so many things that if you think about in your life, did you really give it your best? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it, and it stops you from being like a victim about it because, you, you know, oh, why didn't, that's so not fair. Why didn't I get that? Yeah. Why didn't, oh, that's not fair on me. But if you think back and you go, well, actually. Did you really give it like your fucking absolute mm. best? Mm. I don't think I can probably, I don't think I can think of a time where, you know, where I did give it that, like, I needed to breathe that much. I don't think yeah, I can. I, yeah. I don't think I can. I. Because I think we all get these waves that I, I especially do with, like, <laughs> with, like, um, you know, like, little business ideas. I'm like, yeah. I'm fucking it. And then for the next four hours, and then that sort of, like, wanes high off. Yeah, wanes yeah. off, doesn't it? And then 100%. You, and then... And then you're on to something else or you've forgotten about it or you haven't got that motivation as much as when... It's like when you when you said about that Airbnb thing, mm. about... I was like, I looked up, started to look into <clears> it and think, right, I can somehow get that. I can... So, imagine if I can get like a little apartment. I can fucking... And then five hours later, nah, can't be asked. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what separates my people from being successful yeah, yeah. to those who aren't. <clears throat> and that's why I think there's a lot of kind of sometimes bitterness and jealousy in the world because people see someone doing well and they'll go, I've got a friend who uh, is a great guy, he's a good mate, but he always has these great ideas, but he doesn't do fuck all about them. <laughs> and there's a nursery, right, just not down the road. And he said to me before it got built, he was like, that'd make a good nursery, that look, it's right next to that office block, fucking good um, location links and st- links to transport, make a great nursery, that. I want to look into it, you know, I'm telling you that's a great idea. Year or two later, there's a, there's a fucking nursery there. It's not his. It's not. There's a nursery there. And it's doing well. And he goes now, ah, fucking, that was fucking my idea, that. And I'm like, but you didn't do fuck all about it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And it's almost, he's a bit like, a bit bitter towards, like as if they've they've just been luckier than him or something. It's yeah. like, he's not luckier than you. They just wanted that so bad that they were like, fucking, I'm going to yeah. do that. And I think, if, if listen, if everyone's honest with themselves, anytime you've failed... It might be the odd one or two percent where it's just something completely happens and it's out of your control. But 98, 99 percent of the time, you've not been successful because you didn't want it bad enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah Do you exactly. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, it's a really good point now about the um about the nursery thing. Yeah. You know, about ideas and that sort of thing. Yeah. Because the amount of people who've got ideas, like me myself included, and you just go you just haven't got that like execution to Where's the best place to go for ideas? Where's the place where you can go? There's a place, there's a location, right? There's many locations around the world that you can go and there's the most ideas ever in one place. The cemetery. Because people die with these ideas yeah, yeah. that they don't do fuck all with. I like that. You like that yeah, one? No, it's, love that. That <laughs> it's true though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. How many people have these ideas and they don't do fuck all about them? Well, actually, if there's, there is anything positive I suppose to come out of this corona thing is that it might give people though that extra bit extra oomph i suppose to do those ideas that because once everything's stripped back of fuck i haven't got a job anymore my incomes and you can get over that and you can get through that mm. then what have you got to lose yeah you know, it's like life of brian that uh life of brian saying you know you come from nothing and you go back to nothing what have you yeah. lost nothing yeah <laughs> do you know I mean ultimately we've got fuck all to lose haven't we yeah you know that's why I think that people who, you know, people who are um, starting out in an idea or anything like that and actually genuinely have nothing to lose are so dangerous because, yeah. you know, like, you know, it's like, you, you know, you, you've, I don't know, I'm, so I'm a good example. You know, I've got a house now and things. So I've got stuff to lose. I've got a missus. I've got stuff to lose. And I do sometimes think to myself, God, if I was like single living in a rental thing, I wonder how much like the different sort of... The desire you'd have maybe. To do different things because I've got nothing to lose. I've, yeah. You, know. you do become more responsible and you do yeah. be a bit more cautious. You get older, of course you do. And, that, and that's obviously, that that's fine and normal. I just think that with... With kinds of ideas though, mate, that if you've got something that you do believe in, fucking go for it. Do you mm. know what I mean? And 
Yeah, yeah. And again, no disrespect to any ideas you've had, but you hear about people who, who <laughs> have got wife and kids, but are so determined still. They're like, fuck it. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, saying to the missus, look, I'm, I'm going to have to mortgage the house up to the eyeballs. I'm taking a loan out. You know, can you ask your mum and your, you know, your mum and dad for savings? I've really got this. And they really fucking... So that does happen as well. Yeah, yeah, of course it does. Yeah, yeah. And again, this this could be a moment where, like, again, the thing you say, like, if you've got nothing, you come from nothing, you've got nothing. A lot of the things that have been stripped away from us now, we're back to nothing. What have you got? You've got... Yeah, yeah. Just you. Yeah, yeah. The Status doesn't matter. Status does. The big house you've got <laughs> fucking doesn't matter <clears throat> anymore. You know, the nice car you've got sitting there, if you've got 10 cars in your garage, whatever you might have... None of that fucking matters no more. You, you know, your thousands of pounds worth of watches and jewellery and clothes. You're fucking stuck in your house, mate. That doesn't fucking matter no more. Mm. So all these material things don't matter. The things that matter are back to basics. Being a nice person. You know, being you know, being a good friend. Being a, you know, all these yeah, yeah. genuine things. And they're the things that you can work on now. And you can think, you know what? I've been so focused on making money. And that I've not even rang me nan to show she's doing. Yeah, yeah. You know. Mate, there's so many positives to come from, from, I remember in 2008, there was obviously a lot of people lost their jobs, but there was so many, I've heard so many stories of people who'd actually lost the job and thought, this is the time. Otherwise yeah. I'd never have quit my job, yeah, Totally, yeah. Um, you know, and to do something new. <clears throat> Tommy, uh, there's a, is it Tommy Mallet? He has a, com he's off, um, he was on uh, The Only Way is Essex. But anyway, I follow him, yeah, he's got a, like a shoe company. I think, mm -hmm. you know, fair play to the guy, you know. <clears throat> and we've talked we talk about this before but he said something on his on his um instagram that there's this is such a wake-up call we spoke this we said this last friday but this is such a wake-up call for people who do live month to month who do or you know who who, who don't have any savings who do have a decent job mm. but spunk it all at the weekends or spunk it on a thousand pound trainers you know, because what a thousand pound train is going to do you now? Do you yeah. want to fuck all, really? Yeah. You know, so myself included, like I've, I've, I've looked at my outgoings, and I think you did. You said you were going to just to sort of scale back and think, do I really need to do that? Do I really need to pay for that? Maybe I should put a little bit more aside. You know, oh, I've definitely, mate. I'm, I'm such a bad one for saving now again. So, but my counter argument to that is, when people do get going again, and they do get money coming in, will they think a bit like, well, fuck it? Not so much for the trainers, and hopefully people will have learned by that, but I mean, the way I kind of live my life now, and a bit like, <laughs> right, well, come on then, and we're going away for the weekend. Mm. I'm making memories, I think. Yeah, yeah, experiences. And, and I, think yeah. It's, I think it's a fine line. It's I've I've took away from this already to start kind of put a, put a bit more away savings-wise mm. and stuff like that. That's something I've took from it, but I'm positive. I wonder if the, the... Sorry, mate. I wonder if the same people who were maybe in our age age bracket thought the same in 2008, but then did, did fuck all about it after it all. Maybe, it may be... I hope not, but maybe this, the weeks and months after the corona stuff is finished, might be a little bit like what we're talking about then. You know, you'd have these great ideas, but then suddenly life just gets back to normal and then you just... Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could, it's, yeah, 100%. That's, that's mate. what could have happened in yeah. 2000. 100%. It's like when you go on holiday. When you go on holiday, you've got a time to think. You're not doing your usual thing. And suddenly your mind starts thinking about, I certainly do anyway, starts thinking, oh, well, how, what if I did that? Or maybe I should go that direction, anything. And then as soon as you get back on the treadmill yeah. at work, it's all gone like that, isn't it? You know, so that, I think even when you book a holiday and you think, right, going to get fit now for your holiday, you probably go to the gym two or three times <laughs> and then you don't go again. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like that. So. That's the big thing that people have got to get is is acknowledge that whatever you need to do, whether it is walking your dog, going on to exercise in your living room, watching hopefully the Lego podcast or yeah. watching YouTube clips that are going to inspire and motivate you. Mm. Don't keep watching Corona shit. Yeah, yeah. Fucking don't. Don't, yeah. don't, don't. Saturday night I was sitting here, I had a glass of wine Saturday night. I'd had a great day, went down for me once. I had a really great day. Good food, good wine, good company, all that. Chilling out, felt great. Just as I went to bed, checked my phone. and been on me. It was one of those days where you'd have such a nice time, not even on my phone. Just before I went to bed, looked at my WhatsApp notifications. I'd fucking you know it all pinging off. One of the messages I just seen the headline. It said eight hundred people die in one day in in Italy. And I was like, fuck. Mm. Like why? I was just on such a high, and then I was like, fuck. I was almost in it. 
a corona free bubble. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? I come I was down on four me buds for a couple of hours. Had such a great time. I got in my car driving, I was like, I think put the radio on and you did so I was like, fucking hell god, this this corona outbreak going yeah, you on. Forget like, it, I yeah, just yeah. forgot what was going on. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not saying completely ignore it. But don't look on Sky News every two minutes. Yeah, but don't. It's, it is, it's addictive. The problem is, is they make it, it is, addictive yeah. with, um, you know, because it's, and it's, it's, it's addictive. It, look, I, mate, I've a hundred, I haven't been watching the news whatsoever. My missus had it on, I think I said last time. And I said, you need to fucking turn it off because yeah. your mind's going to melt and you're you're going to become an agoraphobe and not even walk mm. out the fucking house in a minute mm. if you stop, what, if, you, if you keep watching it. But it's like when's it's like this addictive like think of like yeah but they might close this or yeah but what if you know well you get you get your Sky News update once a day five o'clock when Boris yeah. will say his thing just say to yourself I'm gonna try and just do that yeah yeah exactly yeah another thing we spoke about loads is write a list mm. what perfect what more perfect time now to write a list and work through it mate you know, it's such a good point just before bed say to yourself right I want to get up a don't allow yourself to lie until fucking half 10, 11. <laughs> get up, I want to get in, I'm going to get up at half seven, say eight o'clock, whatever. Quick shower, and then I'm have my breakfast. Having that again, try and eat a healthy breakfast if you can. Then I'm going to go for a walk, half nine or 10 o'clock. I want to be out the house, I'm going to walk for an hour. Get back in the house at 11. Like clean up this, this, this right? I'm going to sort through that cupboard at the end of my bed. That fucking, I'm not, that just a dump all over the shite in. Yeah, you know, do yeah. that. I'm going to fucking make a list of things to do rather than... Because otherwise you'll do what I've done a little bit today. You just sit there, re, watch refreshing Twitter, yeah. looking at Instagram stories, mm-hmm. watching people kick a fucking bog roll around, which is fun <laughs> for a couple of minutes until it's just mind numbing then in the end, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. If it you've is. got a list there though and you're held accountable for this list, you'll, you'll get up off your yeah, ass yeah. and you'll do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then you'll start to feel a bit more productive, a bit more positive. And then suddenly that ball just starts rolling a little bit. Yeah. And it's not then going backwards and stagnating and you're like... Exactly, mate. Yeah. And there's nothing better than going on Amazon and buying a brand new notepad. <laughs> I love it. I love buying a pen. <laughs> yeah. And then it comes and you're like, this list is... Did, did you know, there's another one for you here. I got told when um, years and years, I can't remember who told me this. But again, we're talking like this and someone said to me, you need to buy a notebook and pen. But it'll be the best thing you do you hold yourself accountable for stuff. And I was like, yes, good shout. And they went to me, don't just buy a shitty fucking big pen and a shitty little thing because you won't respect it. You'll just go spend 20, 30 quid and buy yourself a good leather, you know, a nice stylish one. And I was like, I'm fucking spending 20 quid on a fucking notebook. <laughs> but you know the difference it does if you if it's nice and yeah, it's, yeah. you look at it and you go, it's a nice, you know, um, pack pen. of pen. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, mate, because yeah, yeah, if it's yeah. just a little shitty note, you're like, fucking... yeah. But if it's if you paid twenty quid for it, you're, you're not gonna be, like... be binning it and ripping pages out. You're yeah, gonna yeah. be like, right, because if it's just one of those notebooks, and you're gonna r- write neatly in it, and you're gonna put, exactly, it, you're gonna go, go on the paragraph stupid lines. Stupid as that and... sounds, it fucking has an impact. Yeah, yeah. If I wrote a to do list now on it with a big pen on a shitty little notebook, and I got to five o'clock and I'd only done one task, I could lie to myself. I could rip it out. I go, oh, fucking, I'll start it tomorrow. And again, I could write neat in this one. And, and I'm just lying to yourself. Mm. If you buy a decent one and you're writing it, you can't quite rip it out because then you'll know it's been ripped out and you, you can't <laughs> yeah. lie to yourself. Yeah, you? yeah, yeah. And it's that thing, they've done an experiment um, in America. And it was about, if you can see yourself and hold yourself accountable, you know, the impact on <clears> succeeding <throat> or not doing right from, doing right from wrong is, yeah. is so far greater. And, and the experiment that they've done it was um, it was on kids they done it uh, for Halloween, and what they done is they uh, kid knocked out a door, and someone opens it and he's got a big thing of sweets, and he says, "Oh hi," um, and he's just about to give her the sweets, and um, he goes and someone shouts at them, so he puts the big thing of sweets down and says, "I'll be back in two minutes," and runs out, and he just waits. That's it. <laughs> just, he leaves them, and it's down to the kid. Is, is the kid just gonna? Take what's not theirs, or or not? Is you just can leave it empty? Or they just leave, yeah. The right thing to do is you know they've not given you nothing, so you yeah, you yeah. can't just take. So the right thing to do is, is to leave. Obviously, what they found is if there was no kind of if if there was no accountability, if you like, they couldn't see themselves being naughty and taking stuff. That 
no one could see them, so they take the sweets. What they then done is they put a mirror directly in front in the hallway, a mirror, so you could see yourself taking <laughs> these sweets. And they found that if you could see yourself being naughty, if you like, you were less likely to take the sweets. Yeah, I can I can imagine that. Do you know what I mean? What a good experiment that is, yeah. So it's just holding yourself accountable and having a notebook and pen. You wake up every morning and you wake up and you go, yesterday I've ticked, you know, nine out of ten off. Great. I'll start off with the one I didn't do and then add me list. So weird you say that because I was not long ago reading Jordan Peterson's book and this kind of relates to it if you can see where I'm going with this. But when you, obviously you've got Oppo, you've got a dog, you... Because you're accountable, I suppose, for that dog. Every if that if you went to the vet and the vet said, "Now, Andy, you need to give Oppo this medicine every single morning, otherwise, Oppo's going to get ill." Every single morning, you'll make sure you take you put that medicine into Oppo's food, and he can have it every single morning. The amount of people who go to the doctors for themselves and they say, "You need to take this tablet every single day, otherwise, you're going to be fucked." And they just ignore because yeah. they're not a cat. Do you know what I mean? Crazy that, isn't it? Yeah. It is. And so it's so similar, you know, when, when you are like accountable as such. Yeah. For whether it's a, accountable for a dog or you're accountable for yourself. But in that instance, looking back in the mirror. Yeah. You know, and you can see yourself. Yeah, you yeah. can see yourself. Yeah. What a good experiment that is. I like that. It's good, isn't it? When did you, who told you about that? I'm just full of little fountains <laughs> of knowledge. Do you know what I mean? Um, Actually, on that point, I, re- I get. Um, Mate, there's something really nice about... Um, By the way, can I just say, I feel like the best I've felt all day. Just socialising, talking <laughs> about stuff. <laughs> Rather than on... Um, just fucking yeah, yeah. roller coaster tycoon, honestly. So I, go, going off on, on the tangent here, so whenever I get order a new book off Amazon, I'm like, there's something really satisfying about getting a new book and you've like, there's something about when you're trying to seek out knowledge that is so mm. so i get the new scientist every single week right which is a sad sort of magazine to get but mate it fucking blows my mind sometimes they've got things about physics and like they make it quite easy to read one thing in there there was a there was an experiment experiment they did. <clears throat> i love this sort of stuff there's an experiment they did on people who are lost right and it's it's sorry it wasn't an experiment it's research done on what we do when we're lost as in lost as in you're in a mountain and you mm. don't know where, where to go and doing experiments on people who are lost is obviously extremely hard to do because when they're lost they're panicking and you can't just replicate that scenario yeah. for them because it's extremely dangerous to just put someone in the middle of a mountain so this is your experiment you've got to try and survive the number one tip right is to stay still as in don't move don't try and find your way out which I thought was surprising, but also people are naturally, naturally uh, inclined to move towards borders. So field borders, where there's a hedge or tur- or um, you know, like a ditch, an irrigation mm. ditch, rather than obviously staying in the middle of a field. People are more drawn to, and they did this whole ex- whole sort of like study about what people do when they're lost and missing. I thought it was incredible. But yeah, stuff like that. I just you just fucking reminded me. <laughs> I know it's random. You just random, reminded me. Random knowledge, yeah. But those, those like, I, mate, I love those sort of experiments. Like, yeah, those like, like awareness sort of experiments where you can say, look, they did this. Yeah, right? and see how the human like brain that. works. One of my favourite ones like that. And I'm sure we've mentioned it on the very first or one of the first podcasts. It's the monkey one. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you about that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. That to me, for anyone who hadn't heard it, it's about society and how, which I suppose links into this whole corona shite now. It's like we're kind of programmed to live a certain way. And it, it's this experiment done with loads of chimpanzees and they made like a kind of fountain and um, put them all in this room. And then at the top, there was a bunch of bananas. So initially the monkeys just run up to the top. But as they, stu- as they got to the top level, there was like a button. And as they stood on it, fountains come and sprayed all the chimpanzees and knocked them all off the fountain, etc. A few minutes later, they dusted themselves down. Another one goes up to try and do it again. Grab the bananas. Same things happens. Knocks them all off. It happened three or four times until the monkeys quickly realised when one of us tries to get a banana, we all get fucking soaked. The scientist then took a monkey out and put a fresh monkey in. So the fresh monkey hasn't got a clue. Sees the bananas, tries mm. and gets them. The other nine monkeys, because they know what's going to happen, fucking get this monkey and stop them from Don't doing fucking... it. Don't fucking go up there. We all get soaked, you cunt. <laughs> Anyway, so they keep doing this and keep replicating this and each monkey then gets, you know, beaten up as they're going up till eventually all 
10 monkeys have then been changed. So you get this weird thing where every monkey in there, not one of them is seeing for themselves what happens when they stand on the top. But they're just inbreding them. Don't go up there. Don't go up there. And then like the story goes, you know, they turn the fountains off. So all of a sudden now, even if they went up there, they wouldn't there's get no, yeah, up. They could have the bananas and... Yeah, there's no danger. Yeah. Everyone's too scared to do it because... Not because they see what happens, they've just been told. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's just the way things are. Yeah. And then then the story goes, a fucking gorilla comes in, gets led into the cage. And he just goes, well, fuck this, I'm going to get the bananas. <laughs> and all the chimpanzees are too scared to have a go at him. To and say anything, you know, don't yeah, go. Yeah. And he just goes up and obviously they've turned the fountains off anyway at this point. So the gorilla just sits there and eats the banana. And the, the point of the story is, you know, if you're bold enough to say, you know what, I want to test the boundaries a bit here. You know, you can get the bananas, you can achieve your goals. And I think, again, you know, society is telling us now we need our phones, we need our social media, we need, you know, to be on Instagram every day and we need to be all these, like, just the society is telling us how to kind of, you know, to be. We need to look like this way to be on holiday. We need to have our boobs out here. We need to have muscles here and we need to have this amount of money and we need to... Those who maybe take a step back and actually don't do what society is telling them and can use maybe these three months in a positive way to think i want to reconnect with with me again mm. you know i want to read more books <clears throat> i want to reconnect with my family and friends who i can facetime and i can you know that might be the spark then that creates a new business idea or a new way of living or a new i'll uh, try yoga wow well, i feel better now i'll try yoga or yeah, I've, yeah i started running 5k in the evenings and wow well, I actually really like running. Mm. You know, those who don't follow the grain and actually go against it. Oh, what a good time to start a podcast. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're home. And you know what? Perfect time. And I've, I've, I've seen a few people have messaged us and um, about podcasting. They've said, how do you do it? I've sent all the info and stuff, but then they haven't they haven't done it. Mm. I know three or four people who've been dead certain and they're going to start one or they've at least started it and, and haven't done it much with it. Yeah, yeah. And again, it's it's... I remember when I sent you when after we did our one at my house that very first time back in when would that have been September twenty eighteen, mm. and you asked for all the info. I bought it and didn't do nothing. Yeah, you did, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. you bought it. Yeah, yeah. I didn't didn't, yeah, didn't yeah. do anything with it. Yeah, and I think I sent you an email saying, "How, how, are, you how are you getting on? How with are you it? getting yeah. on with it? Yeah. With, it? Yeah. with it? That so, was it. Yeah, that's yeah. so fucking mad. That is. So it? you need to be persistent with these ideas and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And I think. And I love that analogy because again, it's sometimes society tells you what to do and stuff. And sometimes you you need to just connect again with yourself and think, you know, why am I doing it? You know, find out your why. Mm. Why do I want to do a podcast or why do I want to, why do I think it's important to wear a Rolex and to make all this money? Why do I think it actually, you might sit there and go, again, you fucking have, have a fucking 20 grand Rolex upstairs that no one can fucking see because you're not allowed out your house. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? And what a good time is just talking about podcasts where everyone's got fuck all to do mm. and you can just jump on Skype mm. and just... I reckon now, if we really tried to get... I hate Skype interviews. I hate them. you can't see someone, you just... I used to do people, them all the, people all the time. People are asking me to do motivational talks via Skype and I, I won't do them because you can't I, I engage, love that, yeah. that connection that you get with the audience when I do me talks. I don't want to dilute it by having it over fucking Skype. Yeah, yeah. But I reckon now the amount of being a little bit ambitious obviously there's people out of our realm like Jurgen Klopp I suppose <laughs> you never know it might be tough yeah. it might be tough for now for now but I reckon there's so many people we could get on Skype you know if we really fucking tried oh, but yeah. I actually don't want to <laughs> yeah. just because I hate I, <clears throat> I hate the Skype imagine us two sitting in front of a computer going no go on you, you ask the next you ask yeah the next. yeah do you yeah. know what I mean no no and I don't think people just get your personality and stuff it doesn't yeah. I don't think they come it across doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. so I just hope that we um, we can continue to do them because I, I don't May, I'm sure we can we can think of themes we'll, and people can send in stuff yeah we'll we'll, we'll, uh, we'll definitely yeah when are we going to put this out then leave it to Monday or get it out just get it out tomorrow tomorrow yeah. good stuff yeah, yeah. no fucking I matter, may, yeah. I'm glad we haven't focused on anything negative to do with the yeah, corona yeah. stuff and i'm glad you you were feeling because we didn't even say before this that we were going to speak like i know we got to be a positive <laughs> one but i mean i did i thought that some sort of negative kind of would come into it and oh, it yeah. thankfully hasn't no 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 and i feel really good now yeah good to you good yeah i've come round i've uh, we've had a podcast 
That's great. It's mad, isn't it? Can I just say one last thing? On that, you just reminded me, on that New Scientist magazine, this stat really blew my mind, just talking about like trying to lighten things up. Well, I don't know if it is lighting it up, but I think it was 90%, the majority, sorry, not 90%, the majority of crack cocaine users, heroin users, any drug user does not fall into the um, category, I suppose, of an addict. Now, how fucking mad is that? How is that? I don't know. Even her heroin or crack cocaine uses don't fall into the category of an, an, what an addict. What is an addict then? I don't know. You need to. I, I'll bring. I'll that bring. The, I'll bring the magazine and then I'll. Um, I'll. I'll. Uh, I, you know, another positive to finish on other positives, and I don't know. So I know I just. This is just complete. This is my thinking on that, though. I mean, will <clears throat> people who drink, people who take drugs, people who gamble, do you think there should be a time where hopefully they go? You know what? I didn't. I didn't need to have a drink there I haven't drank for three weeks maybe people are drinking in the house I don't know but I can't imagine people are getting drinking as much as they would maybe in the pubs or taking drugs as much as they would when they're in well exactly yeah yeah I, I, I doubt I, mean, I didn't I, I didn't drink at the weekend I had a drink last night just because it was a bit but I got a chimney and it was a nice evening I put the chimney on mm. and then little things like that you know I hadn't done yeah, that in fucking yeah. ages but I don't know whether people not gambling well, we'll, you know, you haven't had to bet on the football. So when the football does start again, people might think that, that fifty quid actually. Yeah. I, I think I think gambling will. Be, I think that thirty it takes thirty days to break a habit. That's what I mean. It? Yeah. I think what what day did the football stop? Was it like Liverpool a week? played the last game in England? I think last big game was the Atletico. Atletico, game. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that would have been that what, two weeks on Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. So that's I mean, right, fourteen there's, days. There's, so. Listen, there's it's endless positivity that will come, and again. If we're going to end it on anything, just just imagine, like, for me, anyway, everyone's going to be different when they can see their friends and family again and go back to normal life. Everyone will have a different, I can't wait moment. Yeah. I just can't wait to be standing with me mates watching Liverpool or having just watched Liverpool. Hopefully they will have won. It's a sunny day. I'm in shorts and t-shirt with a beer going like, oh, I've missed this. <laughs> Like, it's a bit like you what know, a day you know when you've booked a holiday mm. and like there's six months it's like six months away and yeah. you're slowly counting down and you're like as soon as I get to that booking bar you do not and just think it. mate every day when you wake up right it's one day closer from this being over yeah I, listen might go on for a year fuck who knows but no matter how long it's going on for you're one day closer than it being yeah. over and there will be an end yeah of course there will and hopefully by the end of it, we all will have learned a lot more about each other. Fucking love it. Done. <laughs> <laughs> right. So if um, we're going to try and get as many, like I said before, we're going to try and get as many podcasts as we can. So any themes and like that. Yeah, yeah. Like send, send us an email, the leg it podcast at gmail.com. The Instagram, the leg it podcast, Twitter, the leg it, the leg podcast, I think it is. Leg, it, leg, I think yeah. we, we couldn't get the yeah. URL. Leg podcast. Leg podcast. Um, you know what? Just to go on. Go on, no, go, 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 go. I was going to say the things end on right as well. Hopefully, people are feeling a bit more uplifting about this. Eleven years ago today, I found out from my Facebook memories, Jamie, Jamie Carragher come to my house to visit me. Eleven years ago today was seven weeks to the day since I've been blown up in Afghanistan. So you imagine how I'm feeling. I'm twenty years of age, lying in my dad's house, about to drive back to Birmingham. My life is in fucking tatters. I'm fucked. Piss, pissing in a bottle. I'm lying on a couch, pissing into a bottle that I then have to shout my 14-year-old sister into the living room to take a bottle of piss and put it down the toilet because I can't get to the toilet. Fucking hell, that's horrible, isn't it? I'm lying there. All my dignity is gone. And Jamie Carragher walks into my house and says, are you, mate? You know, listen, I'm here for you. You know, if I can do anything, let me know and all that. What, what a fucking lift that gave me. Fast forward 11 years, I'm fucking in the gym with him. Do you know what I mean? I'm mates with him. I'm like, ah, oh, fucking yoga. As shit as that was at the time, you look back at it now and you laugh. Do you know what I mean? No one could have told me 11 years later, you'll be standing in the gym with him. You know, back then I was this frail kind of on death store thinking I've just pissed into a bottle and I'm having to give a bottle of piss to me little sister. How can life improve? There is no, God, life's fucking shit and all that. 11 years later, 
that is such a distant memory. Yeah, yeah. And like the category with my idol growing up, I'm like just in a gym standing next to him like a normal fella. That's how life is. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So as shit as this is now, believe me, it won't always be like this. For those seven weeks, were you just? What was your attitude? Was it I fucking can't be asked anymore? Well, I was in a or coma was... for fucking two weeks. Oh. <laughs> so for five weeks. So for five weeks then, what was your my disbelief? Were you like, this is fucking shit? Yeah, this disbelief of I train like fuck to be a Royal Marine. I love my job. I loved what I was doing. I love my life. And now I've got this big fucking cage on my leg. I've got scars all over my body. I've had me fucking balls blown off. I can't have kids. You know, how am I going to get a date? How am I going to get a girl to fancy me? I've got scars all over my face. I've got chunks missing here, there and everywhere. How how am I going to earn a living? How am I going to get another job? How am I ever going to be able to get out of a wheelchair? Again, I can't have kids. How, how, will I, how am I ever going to go on a date? All these fucking things are going through my head for... for for the next few months, for the next year, I can't comprehend how fucking sad it was, mate. It was awful. Yeah. It was awful. Did you have any during that time? Was there any any positive or not? Apart, obviously, carrier. But like, was it? You know, when in your mind, did you think? You know, did you did you come? Did you ever think right? I can fucking. This is what am I going to do here? Am I going to? Because it's easier said. It's easy for us. What I'm trying to. The point I'm trying to get at is, it's easy for us to go here. Yeah, yeah. You know, everything's going to be fine. It's fucking positive. And but you know, but when you're actually in the thick of the thick mm. of it of in this in our situation here, you haven't got a job because you've lost it because of fucking Corona. You're stuck in the house. Do you know what I mean? So in your situation, was there anything that? I just have hope. But have did a but lot did of it. you? Part of it, yeah. When when again you're speaking to people and people are being supportive again, which is what we need now to just be that support. Like again, no one knows. I can't say to you now, come on, Tom. Two weeks and it'll be over this Corona shit because I don't know. At the time, my dad couldn't say to me, "Come on, mate. You know it'll be it'll be all right." He didn't fucking know. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Mental health nurses are coming around asking me if I'm suffering from PTSD if, if I'm having flashbacks, and they're like, "If this does happen, but you know." They didn't fucking know where I was going to, like, a surgeon saying, I'm going to put this cage on your leg. I'm going to try and grow your leg back six centimetres. Again, she didn't have a fucking clue either. But yeah, you've got to have that hope that, you know what, my dad's right. It, you know, we'll be okay. Mm. Hopefully this mental health nurse is right. Hopefully I won't have flashbacks. And if I do, this is what I need to do. Hopefully this surgeon's right and the, the operation goes well. You've got to, mate, if you just shut down and think, well, they're all wrong. This is shit and that's it. Then yeah, it will be shit for you and you won't get out of the little rut that you're in. But if you have hope and you think, you know what, my dad might be right this one day we might look back and laugh at this. You know when Ian in the bed next to me, you know, he's joking, saying, Oh, you're fucking ugly anyway, you never you were never gonna get a bed anyway, and I'm you know, you're joking about it and then and he's like, Nah, come on, it'll be fine, mate, you know, you'll eleven eleven years on, mate. I know that's a long time, eleven years. But it, it happened before then, but yeah. eleven years on. Can you imagine me saying to you now at 20 years of age, all that stuff will have happened, but it'll be the best thing that's ever happened to you. Mm. You'd be like, who the fuck are you talking to? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it genuinely was the best thing that happened to me. Oh, if yeah. I, if if your that, dad had said to you during that time, oh, oh yeah, mate. mate, Andy, come on, mate, stop like feeling sorry for yourself. This is this the best be, thing that's ever happened to you. I'd be like, dad, I've just off. had my fucking balls <laughs> blown off. This is not the best thing to ever happen to me. <laughs> And even to talk about it now and laugh is weird because it's like it's such a manly thing and I and I kept it such a dark secret for so long and I was like oh god, but now I'm I'm dating I've, I've had girlfriends I've had you know relationships and fucking things have gone great on that side over the years I've got me little girl things are things are amazing they do get better mm. I don't care how shit it may feel now and it does feel shit for a lot of people and it's very scary but believe me you just gotta have that little bit of hope because it, it will end and it, it will get better good way to end sorted Back we could be tomorrow. fucking charged we should be charging for this <laughs> shouldn't we <laughs> that's been good mate I, mean, I, I feel a lot better anyway yeah so do I mate yeah it's good I thought it's always good to do like a little impromptu sort of like yeah definitely have a it's good chat that's going out midweek as well rather than having to wait another week yeah we'll just sling it out people um, people have got fuck all else to do yeah it's good right mate cheers for that